Hello and welcome back to switching to Ubuntu GNOME. In this video, we're going to be focusing on improving our terminal experience. Now, by default, when you install Ubuntu GNOME, you get this terminal emulator called GNOME Terminal. That's what we're looking at right here. GNOME Terminal is pretty good. It does exactly what you need it to. It allows you to enter commands and view their results. It's really quite simple. However, there are alternative terminal emulators out there that can enhance both your experience and your productivity often considerably. The terminal emulator that I like to use is called Terminator and the biggest benefit of Terminator is that it allows you to view multiple terminals within a single window. As you can see this terminal has been split into four quadrants. This guy's got Vim running in the top right to edit some code, he's looking at his processes in the bottom right and got some other stuff going on the left. I typically have a similar workflow because I am a software developer. If you're thinking, well I don't really need that many terminals in one window, but that's not a reason to rule out alternative terminals altogether. There are fairly popular drop-down terminals like Quake and Tilda, and in the case of GNOME, it's called drop-down terminal, that looks something like this. In the case of Tilda, you press the Tilda shortcut key and your terminal drops down from the top. And you press the Tilda key again and it will animate back up into the top of the screen. It's really handy when you're using the terminal because you don't have to sort of flick through all your open applications to find a terminal because it's something that you use pretty commonly on Linux, at least most people do. So yeah, I'm going to install Terminator and it's really quite easy to install because it's already one of the available repositories. We'll just say sudo apt get install terminator and enter the password. Now when I go to the activity overview and search for Terminator, you can see that I have a new terminal now called Terminator. The biggest advantage, of course, is that you can right click and you can split your terminal, for example, vertically and then switch between the two terminals. Maybe here I'll list some files and maybe here I'll list some processes. I know that's not very exciting, but you get the general idea. You can then close your terminal pane, if you will, using Control, Shift and W, and you can create pretty much an infinite number of terminals using the shortcuts. I think it's Control, Shift and No and Control, Shift and E to create new terminals and Control, Shift, W to close them. If you're new to Terminator and you're not really sure about the shortcut keys, it's okay because you can just right click. So yeah, I'll admit that out of the box, Terminator does not look very good. However, it is more customizable than Gnobe Shell in my opinion. And a really big driving force behind that is that most of the customization for the terminal is aesthetic in my experience. And there is this GitHub repository called iTerm2 Color Schemes. Now iTerm2 is a terminal on OS X, but for each color scheme and this huge list, there are also pack themes, I think, for Terminator in this folder, and we'll get to that in a second, but let me first solve the most, like, uh, not, it's not irksome, but it's just not very nice, this red bar at the top, I want to remove it. So I'm going to right click, go to preferences, and under profiles, I'm going to disable show title bar. I'm going to make some other changes, I'm going to change the font. I think I'm also going to disable the scroll bar and under the global tab I'm going to reduce the size of the terminate terminal separator so that it is as, as small as possible. Now as you can see the font's been updated and there is no longer that red bar. Next I'll update the color scheme and the color scheme that I want to use is called space gray and it looks something like this. So to inst after I've chosen my color scheme, space gray, yours will probably be different, go to the terminator folder press and hold control F and search for the name of the theme minus space gray and I'll take this one copy and paste everything beneath the name of the theme in brackets because what this denotes is a profile and we've already got a profile called default you'll see that in a second I'm going to go to Terminator and inside of Sublime I'm going to open under the config folder Terminator I think it's just called config as you can see I can now come here and paste those options exactly where it kind of makes sense to paste them into the default profile and make sure they're in line with everything else and make sure if you've done more customization there are no duplicate entries and stuff like that. Close Sublime, close Terminator and now when I open up Terminator as you can see it's got that space gray color scheme. The reason why I chose space gray you might have noticed is that for Sublime text off screen I use these same themes so it can be really nice to use them both in conjunction like this. The next thing I want to do is replace the bash shell with a shell called fish. Now you have to make the distinction between the terminal emulator and the shell. 
Briefly, I would explain the terminal emulator to be the application that enables you to access preferences and to create new tabs and stuff like that. The shell is really what you're looking at here. This is the shell where this blinking asterisk is. And by default, you're using bash. However, there are alternative shells. For instance, there is a shell called fish shell. There is also another popular shell called ZSH, which is also pretty good. But my favorite feature of fish shell is the auto completion. It has got very intelligent auto completion. And the best thing about it that's different to most solutions is that it remembers the arguments that you've passed in the past. So when you use, for example, SSH, it's kind of difficult to remember IP addresses and sometimes domain names, and so it'll remember it. Similarly, if you have frequently accessed directories, it'll become quite useful then. Anyway, to install Fish, you can go to the terminal, or in my case, it's actually specifically Terminator, and then say sudo apt-get install Fish. And now Fish is installed. I can access the Fish shell by typing in Fish, and as you can see, in bash, we have this dollar. Inside of fish, we have this arrow, and the tilde is colored. And apart from that, you really won't notice much difference, except, for example, when I type in ls, you can see I'm getting autocomplete. If I type in cd, I've previously cd'd into config, and I get autocompletion like this. It's really nice. And as I use fish more, the autocompletion will kind of grow, and it's nice like that. Now, the trouble is, if I close Terminator and open it up again, I'm back to using bash. In fact, oh, it actually seems to have remembered that I'm using fish. That could be because I've been playing around with this in the past. So let me just show you to, for completeness what you need to do to make fish your default shell. What you need to do is, is you need to type in chsh, which stands for change shell, then use the s flag and specify the path for fish, and then enter your password. And now, when you restart Terminator, you'll be using fish. I'm not sure if it was just because it I, I opened and closed it very quickly or if maybe it remembered that option from before, but either way, now I'm using Oh My Fish, uh, rather Fish Shell as my default shell. Talking of Oh My Fish, that's the next thing I want to install. So Fish is the shell. Oh My Fish is basically a collection of plugins and themes that are built on top of Fish. And to install it, you simply go to the installation section in the readme and copy and paste this command. You are going to need curl installed, so I'm going to install that first. I'm going to say apt get install curl. And curl is basically a command line utility for making HTTP requests. Uh, it's typically used just to download a file, but you can also use it to make post requests and stuff like that. And there we go. Oh, my fish is now installed, it tells me. Great. Now, if I close Terminator and reload it, we now have all my fish running. And it's telling us theme Robbie Russell is not installed. Run OMF install to download and install it. Similarly, the plugin isn't installed. This is because the way that all my fish works, this has changed quite recently. It used to be that when you installed all my fish, you would download every single theme and every single plugin, but now you have to add them manually. I prefer this because often I don't use that many plugins and I'd like to only install the ones that I use. And the way that you customize your theme, because I don't want to use the Robbie Russell theme, is you go to, you use Sublime and you go to the config directory, fish, and then go to config.fish. And as you can see, it wants the theme to be Robbie Russell. I know that I like the theme Tac Toa. So I'm going to close, I'm going to set that as the theme and then restart Terminator and watch. Rather than saying it can't find Ruby Russell, it's saying it can't find Tac Toa and you need to run OMF install. So I will. I'm not expecting this to work. And if we scroll up, you'll see why. It tells us that we haven't got Git installed. Git is essentially a source control tool and it can be used to basically download repositories from GitHub. It uses a different protocol than HTTP. It uses the Git protocol, so you can't just use HTTP. And simply, we'll install Git and everything will just work. So we'll type sudo app get install git. If you're a software developer, you're familiar with Git. If you're not, you don't need to know about it. Just know that once you've installed Git and you run OMF install, it will install the theme. Well, really, what this means, not this is not installing a theme. This is installing the theme plugin. And then this is the actual theme called Tag Toa. And now when I restart Terminator, as you can see, I'm using a custom theme. We have this kind of Lambda symbol and the benefit of themes isn't necessarily, well, this is a pretty simple theme. It's just using a nice little Lambda icon. I quite like it. 
and yeah but there are more advanced themes if you want to not advanced but more elaborate themes if you go to the oh my fish github organization and search for theme you'll see a huge number of themes each in individual github repositories for example this one's crazy it's too busy for my liking but maybe you like it and rather than using you know you saw me earlier say in that sublime file and look at this because i typed it previously i can very quickly go back there i use taktoa you just replace that word with the name of the theme so this is theme hyphen agnosta, I believe. So just use agnosta in that text file or config file. And you know, all my fish is kind of undergoing some changes at the moment. And one change that they want to implement, I've seen them discussing it in the GitHub issues, is a list of all the themes. That doesn't exist at the moment. So the, what you have to basically come here, search for theme and manually look at each repository. And it's a little bit tedious, but once you found the theme you like, it's all good. The other cool thing about um, Oh My Fish is that it's not just themes, it's also plugins. And if you do click on plugins, there is a plugin directory. One plugin I really like, and I'll just install one, is Jump. So to install Jump, I'm gonna come here and add a new plugin. So we have the theme plugin, which enables us to change themes. It comes by default because it's something fairly typical, but we'll use the Jump plugin now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart Terminator and it will tell us that jump is not installed, run omf install. Great. And I don't think I need to restart. Um, I don't think I need to restart Terminator at this time. But yeah, basically jump is a utility that enables you to mark a particular directory. So I could go into C documents and maybe have a, a, a folder for code. Oops. And then I can say mark code. Uh, yeah, let me just restart Terminator because. So usually I'd go to CD documents, CD code, but now I can say mark code. I can exit, for example, or I can go somewhere completely different, like somewhere deep in config. And then I can say jump code and that will automatically take me to code. It's kind of like making bookmarks in your terminal. And whilst just looking at this article, it was actually intended for bash originally. So you can do this using bash, but it's super simple to install when you use oh my fish. There are a bunch of other extensions in this list. Where did I put it? Yeah, that may or may not appeal to you. Like, I don't care about anything to do with Rails because I'm not a Rails developer, but I do care about, for example, the Node and NDN packages, and I'll look into those later. There is also a cool package that I use called GI that lets you generate Git ignores using the terminal. It's really nice. Um, yeah, so one more thing I want to point out before I conclude is that when you go to, uh, I can never pronounce the name of the file manager, Natalius, it's basically just the file explorer. You can right click and open in terminal and this is going to open inside of GNOME terminal still. Now, unfortunately, there is a bug, I believe with Ubuntu, that means that you cannot change the default application for this uh, context menu. There may be an elaborate alternative, but simply skimming through this thread, you know, people are referring to a bug after Ubuntu 13.04. I tried some of this stuff, it doesn't really work. So my solution's a little bit lame, and you're not gonna like it at all if you really want that feature, but basically I'm gonna remove GNOME Terminal. And that's fine with me because I'm using Terminator now, so if I search for term, it's only gonna see Terminator. And also if I go to the file explorer and I right click, let me refresh it, let me reload it rather. Mm, I think you need to log out and log back in or maybe I can just do this. Let's have a look real quick. Yeah, you need, but basically after you log out and log back in, this context menu item will have disappeared and you can just forget about it. I don't really use the explorer that much anyway. Maybe there is an alternative. There is some, this guy here has got a solution that's okay. Um, but as you can see, it's not the same. You have to go to this sub menu and yeah, I don't really want that, but maybe you do. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been a tutorial basically on how to improve your terminal experience. I'll see you in the next video.